Accidents in confined spaces? Maybe if you work in a mine or something. But the work I do is pretty standard. If there were a problem, I'd be able to see it. Oh, you hear about pipes flooding and gases that'll knock you out, but extra safety precautions take time. Anyway, I've never seen anybody get hurt. We're well trained. And I'm alert enough to recognize a problem if it develops. I've worked in this industry for 20 years. None of my men have ever been seriously injured. We're quick enough to handle any kind of trouble. These people obviously do their jobs well, but their response to the dangers of confined spaces ignores the reality of a potentially deadly hazard. Incidents of confined space injuries or fatalities are disturbingly similar, even though the jobs and job sites vary. June 1988. A member of a work crew investigating a gas leak is overcome six feet underground. His foreman attempts to pull him out and is overcome as well. A passerby calls for help, but before the men can be rescued, three firemen suffer from gas inhalation. The workers die of carbon monoxide poisoning shortly after arriving at the hospital. August 1988. A manhole worker collapses 19 feet underground when working in a sewer. A co-worker tries to tie a rope around him and is overcome. A third worker is overcome attempting rescue. By the time the firemen pull the first worker from the hole, he is already dead. Exposure to hydrogen sulfide is suspected. Every year in North America, hundreds of confined space accidents or fatalities occur in sewers, pipes, excavations, wet wells, and other confined spaces. The bottom line is workers have died in confined spaces, and death comes swiftly, silently, and often without the slightest warning. Why are these spaces so dangerous? I've been investigating confined space accidents for over 10 years. These spaces are so dangerous because employers and workers don't always understand how they can become so dangerous. I mean, if you don't think they're dangerous, you're not going to take the proper precautions. Confined spaces can come in a variety of shapes and sizes, but the hazards are all similar. Normally, outside air contains about 21% oxygen and is necessary to sustain life. Some confined spaces contain 21% oxygen, others do not. Oxygen is invisible and may be used up over time in the confined spaces by things as simple as rust or bacterial growth in slime. Other gases may enter the confined space and displace the oxygen. Operations such as cutting with oxyacetylene or heating will consume oxygen. If the oxygen in the confined space is reduced to 12 to 16 percent, workers will experience increased pulse and respiration, impaired judgment, and loss of coordination. If the oxygen level is at 6 to 10 percent or less when the workers enter a confined space, they will experience nausea, vomiting, or loss of consciousness followed by death. Oxygen deficiency is particularly dangerous because it can cause drowsiness or euphoria, which prevents the worker from realizing the danger in time to escape. We're on the scene of a tragic accident where just about an hour ago, two workers were found dead in this sewer. The deaths have been attributed to carbon monoxide poisoning, and officials have indicated that it's possible that the workers didn't follow standard gas testing procedures. When we uh, arrived at the scene, we found the two victims collapsed in the tunnel. My crew went in with full respiration gear, pulled the men out, and tried to resuscitate them. 
but it was just too late. When we checked for carbon monoxide, it was four times safe levels. God only knows what it was when they went in there. No, I don't know why accidents like this happen, but I suspect that the workers just didn't follow proper testing procedures. Carbon monoxide and hydrogen sulfide are two of the most deadly gases found in confined spaces. Hydrogen sulfide and other toxic gases may enter the confined space from a variety of sources, including sewers, rotting material, chemical leaks or spills, or as a byproduct of work processes. Carbon monoxide is odorless and colorless. It's produced from the incomplete burning of any carbon-containing material like gasoline, wood, natural gas, and propane, and can be lethal at doses of 1% or less. Hydrogen sulfide is invisible and has an odor like rotten eggs, but at higher concentrations, it may knock out your sense of smell. Death can result in seconds from hydrogen sulfide exposure. There are so many possible sources for toxic gases that it's impossible to predict the danger without testing. Last year, my partner and I were repairing leaks on the air release valves in the sewer system. My partner was in the hole pumping out water. I happened to look in and saw him slumped over. Sean, are you okay? One second he's fine, the next, out like a light. Hey, I'm pretty strong. There's no doubt in my mind I can climb down and pull him up quickly. All I remember is going down the ladder. Next thing I know, I'm waking up in hospital, and they're telling me my partner's dead. That's how quickly those gases can hit you. Many gases can permeate confined spaces. Some, like methane, are extremely flammable. A single spark could ignite the air around you into an explosive fireball. There are other contaminants which can exist in confined spaces. They're sometimes the remaining byproduct of an old confined space operation, like welding or painting, or they may just seep into the space. But what they all have in common is that they can accumulate to dangerous levels in confined spaces. What I hear from those workers lucky enough to survive is that wherever they were working, they were fine one minute and unconscious the next. The human body is like a sponge, a sponge for gases. And it doesn't matter how big or strong you are. And in many accidents, when a passerby has the presence of mind to phone for help, it's usually too late. So planning on being rescued is obviously not the solution. What can be done to prevent these accidents and injuries? Well, it's really quite simple. You develop a standard set of procedures which you follow, and you provide education and training for the workers. Here are the basic principles which you must follow before working in any confined space. The procedures for your particular workplace will be more detailed. Before entering any confined space, ensure that the surrounding area is free from hazards. Test the atmosphere before you enter a confined space. It's essential that you take samples at various levels throughout the space. The first test to conduct is for oxygen. Oxygen deficiency can occur at any level. Some gases, such as hydrogen sulfide, are heavier than air and could settle on the bottom of the confined space. Methane will displace oxygen. It is an explosive gas and is lighter than air. Carbon monoxide has about the same weight as air, so it can be evenly distributed throughout the space. It's an asphyxiant, which prevents your body from absorbing oxygen, causing you to suffocate. 
ensure that the tests are taken by a trained worker and the results are recorded in a logbook or on an entry permit. If gas levels are unsafe, you must first ventilate and then retest before entering. If the gas levels are within safe limits, you must still ventilate the space before entering. Never use the ventilator like a vacuum to draw air out of the confined space. It may draw in toxic gases from other parts of the space. The fan must blow fresh air into the space. Ventilation will provide a continuous supply of fresh air and prevent the buildup of contaminants. While workers are in the confined space, ensure that there is a worker on watch who can summon a rescue crew in case of emergency or is capable and equipped to conduct a rescue. Depending on the hazardous nature of the work or type of confined space, more sophisticated equipment and procedures may need to be used. For instance, workers may need to use a harness or lifeline attached to a tripod and wear a continuous gas monitor. There are even situations where a worker may have to wear a self-contained breathing apparatus. In summary, ensure the surrounding area is free of hazards. Test the atmosphere inside the confined space. Ventilate the confined space. And finally, ensure that a man watch has been initiated and emergency procedures have been established. Confined spaces can be found on many work sites, but their hazards may not be obvious. Preparation and testing are your only defenses against this potential killer. The danger is real, but by following established work procedures, most confined space tragedies can be prevented. <laughs>